We love Blender, but today we're tearing it apart in the best way possible. Let's break down some of its biggest weaknesses and the features it desperately needs to stay competitive. Before we start, remember one thing. Blender operates on less than 10% of the budget behind Maya, Houdini, Cinema 4D, or 3DS Max, yet it still competes with them. A lot of the features Blender needs technically exist, but in an outdated or limited form. Others don't exist at all unless you install add-ons. And while add-ons help, built-in tools always offer a smoother, more reliable experience. Now let's look at the 10 features Blender desperately needs. One, a proper image editor. Blender already has texture paint and it's great for painting, but the moment you try to add a logo, some text, or do any kind of layer-based image editing, things fall apart fast. Texture paint is fully destructive. You can't easily tweak or move elements after the fact, and simple tasks become way more complicated than they should be. Excuse the plug, but the best way to show what Blender needs is by pointing to the add-on I made out of pure frustration. I wanted to do something simple, add a logo and some text in just a few clicks, and Blender made it surprisingly painful. So I built a layer-based editor that actually makes image editing inside Blender feel natural. And to be fair, I don't think other 3D apps have this either. Cinema 4D, 3DS Max, Houdini, they don't ship with full layer-based image editing tools. So imagine how many artists would jump to Blender if this came built in. It would be a huge workflow upgrade that no other major 3D application currently offers. Two, modern material baking tools. Material export is still one of Blender's weakest points. Blender's material system doesn't translate cleanly into game engines or other DCCs, which makes exporting assets slow and unpredictable. The industry switched to PBR standards ages ago, yet Blender still doesn't have a one-click bake all PBR textures button. You should be able to generate base color, roughness, metallic, normals, AO, emission, everything with zero setup. Until Blender has proper baking, it will always be painful to move assets between software. Number three, real optimization and proxy tools. Blender's viewport performance struggles because it simply doesn't optimize aggressively. Other applications swap to proxy meshes, drop texture resolutions, and use LODs automatically. Blender's simplify function is extremely basic by comparison. Add-ons like Memsaver prove how much better things could be. 4K textures drop to 2K based on camera distance, and then even lower if the object moves further away. Eevee especially would benefit from this since it slows down dramatically with large textures. Blender needs built-in LEDs, proxy workflows, and smarter texture management to keep the viewport smooth on big scenes. A modern fluid simulation system. Mantaflow hasn't meaningfully changed since 2018. It's fine for simple water pours, but once you try anything creative, shaping fluids, controlling flow, morphing forms, or using mesh-based forces, it hits a wall fast. The Flip Fluids add-on is everything Mantaflow should have been. Better foam, particle effects, custom forces, viscosity tools, and real artistic control. Right now, if you want fluid simulations that look intentional rather than accidental, you practically have to use Houdini, Liquigen, or Flip Fluids. Improved object and motion tracking. Blender's motion tracker isn't terrible, but it falls apart the moment footage gets even slightly difficult. Auto tracking fails constantly. Zoom too much and the track collapses. Objects move in or out of frame, and it collapses again. Contrast that with CG Matter's camera tracker add-on, which handles occlusions and difficult footage with almost no user effort. Motion tracking is a fundamental VFX feature, not a niche tool, and Blender needs a smarter, more stable tracker that artists can rely on. When tracking is the first step in integrating 3D and live action, reliability matters more than anything. Six, better cloth tools and procedural workflow. Blender's Cloth Solver itself is decent for basic simulations, but the workflow around it is fragile. We need easy tools for generating proper cloth patterns with evenly distributed triangles, like Houdini's planar patches. Those meshes simulate far better than random topology. Blender also needs a more procedural approach to cloth setups so they don't break the moment you subdivide or tweak the mesh. Anyone who has tried layered garments, complex folds, or tailored setups knows how quickly Blender's cloth system becomes unstable. The solver is fine. The tools around it desperately need upgrading. A more flexible physics system. It's ironic that Blender and Houdini both use the same uh, bullet physics engine, yet Houdini feels a hundred times more capable. That's because Houdini builds countless solvers, workflows, and procedural controls on top of bullet. Blender's physics system stops at the basics. You can't continuously emit rigid bodies. You can't edit a sim midway without breaking it and you can't procedurally control forces the way modern workflows require. Add-ons like Scatterflow add most of these missing features, 
but they shouldn't require an add-on. Blender needs a fully modernized physics layer that supports real production use. Eight, a built-in render playlist. Every major DCC, Maya, Max, Houdini, C4D, lets you store and review previous renders. You can compare lighting changes, check progress, preview animation play blasts, and flip between versions easily. Blender overwrites renders unless you manually save them, and the viewport render animation feature is buried and doesn't store multiple versions. A proper render playlist would let you review your work like a timeline of snapshots, see how shots evolve, and test animations when the viewport is too laggy. It's a small feature that massively improves everyday workflow. Nine, offset animation keyframes. One of the easiest ways to get complex motion graphics is to animate one object, then offset or randomize that animation across a bunch of other objects. This is something Cinema 4D, Houdini, and even After Effects do effortlessly. Blender has no clean built-in way to offset animation across multiple objects without manually shifting keyframes or building complicated node setups. A simple offset tool would make staggered movement, waves, loops, and layered animation incredibly easy. For motion graphics artists, this would be a game changer. 10. A proper render queue. It's genuinely surprising that Blender still doesn't have a real render queue. You should be able to line up shots, switch scenes automatically, render multiple files, and schedule everything overnight. That's normal in most pipelines. A render queue would let you plan your renders during the day, hit one button, and walk away, knowing Blender will process everything in order. Add phone notifications on completion or failure, and it becomes a complete workflow tool. This single feature would save artists countless hours every week. To keep evolving, Blender needs modern tools that reflect how people actually work today. Faster optimization, smarter simulations, better tracking, non-destructive texturing, and more automation. These aren't wish list items, they're workflow essentials. Supporting the 2026 Development Fund is one of the most direct ways artists can help push these improvements into reality. The future of Blender depends on the community, and we've already proven how far that can go.